Hi everyone! Welcome back to a video on how to create an artwork inspired by the artist Claude Monet. When we last left off, we finished a pencil sketch of our water lilies, lily pads, bridge, and some bushes up top. Today we're going to be coloring in certain parts of our artwork using crayons. I covered my crayon box in all of these neat art stickers if you want to take a look. Okay, to begin you want to pick out three similar colors. I'm going to use a pink, a violet red, and a red violet. You can choose any color combination you like. The only kind of colors I would avoid are any greens or any blues because we're going to be doing greens on the lily pad and blue in the water. We don't want it to blend in. I'm going to start by picking the darkest of my three similar colors and I want to color in the bottom of all of my petals using that darkest color. I want to follow the direction of the petals and I don't want to color side to side. You'll see I do each petal individually, pressing very hard with my crayon. You'll see that I'm just coloring the very bottom. I'm not doing the middle section or the top. I'm saving that for my other two colors. My next color is going to be my second darkest color. And I'm gonna put that in the middle of all of my petals, saving my lightest color for the tip of my petals. You'll see that I'm blending my colors together as I go. I don't want three stripes of these different colors. I want them to all look like a gradient. We want one color to blend into another color to blend into the last color. I'm going to color in those little teeny petals on the bottom using a pink, but you can use any color you want that goes with your similar color scheme. After that, I want to trace over my little swirls coming out of the top of my water lilies, and I think I'll use yellow for that. Again, you can use any color you like, but please try to avoid blue since our water will be blue in the background. After I'm done coloring in my water lily, it's time to move on to my lily pad. I'm going to do this using two different greens. I want a very light green and a dark green. I'll use a dark green to trace underneath of my water lily, showing a small shadow. I might even outline the entire lily pad using that dark green. And when I'm done that, I'll go in with my light green and I want to fill in everything that's left on that lily pad. Now during these crayon steps, you do want to be pressing very hard with your crayons. We're doing this because we're creating something called a wax resist, meaning that when we paint over this later, that our crayon wax will resist those areas and they will push away the paint. You'll see that I don't have any little white spaces behind. You can really not see through any of that crayon area and that's our goal here. If you can see through it and there's a lot of white areas, go over, press a little bit harder and fill it entirely up. You're going to repeat those steps, coloring in all three or four or five of your water lilies using those three similar colors, and then fill in your lily pads, making sure to press very hard with your crayons as you go. All right, I'm finished with my water lilies and I can see that they have a very nice thick coat of wax on them. Our next step is to color in our Japanese style bridge. Now in real life, Monet's bridge was a nice greenish, almost blue green color. So I'm going to use a blue-green crayon and a regular green. You can mix together any green and blue that you would like, but those are the two I will be using for this. So I'm starting with my blue-green, and I'm going to press a little lighter this time, but I still plan on doing that thick coat of wax. This is just a different technique. So I'll go through and I'll color in with regular pressure, and then when I go over top with my green, I'm going to press hard, filling in any of that extra white space that might show up. You'll see if I hold this up a little closer, these little white areas that are peeking through, that's the paper coming through, so we want to completely cover that. I'm gonna go in with a lot more pressure with this green and coat over all of that blue-green I just colored.
continue with that blue green and that regular green layering it on using a lot of pressure making sure I get that thick coat of wax all over my bridge you can even go in maybe with a slightly lighter pressure on the area that's behind my bridge bars and I can actually let some of that absorb the paint when I paint over it and it'll make it look like it's a little bit more in the distance finish off my bridge just putting in a few extra details mixing some colors maybe I'll trace over those planks that I drew and add in some bars behind my other ones and you'll see that those are still a little see-through but my areas in front are very thick when our bridge is all finished we'll go in and color in these little fruits or berries whatever you want to call them on our bushes I'm going to use this red violet so they match my water lilies a bit you can use any colors you'd like. You could even use multiple colors, but I'm just using this color to color them all in. Once those are finished, I'll take my dark green and outline the edge of my bushes. And then I will find a nice dark blue or an indigo and I'm going to trace my waterline or my horizon line and I will also add in some nice water ripples or textures in my pond. I'll finish my crayon portions off today by creating a nice little blue shadow immediately underneath of my lily pads. And I'll also throw in a shadow that my bridge is casting into the water. I'm not pressing too hard on these steps because it's okay if that watercolor covers them up a little bit. We don't want the watercolor to cover up our flowers or our bridge though. Okay, and that is it for today. Next week, I'm going to show you how to use regular watercolor to color in the rest of our artwork. We're going to do our bushes, we're going to do our water, and then we're gonna paint a very pretty sunset gradient behind our bridge. How did you do? I hope you enjoyed this coloring step, and I can't wait to talk to you next week. All right, everybody, until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>